And I primarily, I've been practicing about 30 years. I um, represent all size companies, but pretty much start, um, focus on the smaller companies. And I am licensed in Virginia, Maryland, and D.C. Primarily, my companies are in um, this area. So when you told me that you, you have a variety of different majors that you come from, that some of you actually have some small businesses already, um, some of you have no idea about business, um, and I only have 15 to 20 minutes to talk, I'm like, Oh my gosh. And you, you will soon find out I love to talk about what I do in particular. So right off the bat, I know that you were given my website and you were given the opportunity to download my brand new ebook. One thing I'm really bad at as a business owner is marketing. I've just, after seven years of um, owning my own firm, LPP Law, I finally got around to a website, which is very substantive. I uh, suggest you go look at it. And this is basically an outline of different issues that you'll need to um, uh, think about if you're going to go, in, go into business. And again, it's, it's just an outline. In addition to that, because my marketer said you really need to do more, is um, soon to be, I'm going to have little vignettes across my website, LinkedIn, um, and um, my Facebook page, which is right now the firm paid Facebook page with absolutely nothing. I'm old. I don't do that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm going to tell you what you need to do um, for, for a business. But the marketing is only one tiny little piece of it. Um, the, each one of these little sections in this will have a little vignette on it. So a lot of what I say today, eventually it will actually be on there. It's free kind of legal advice and what it is. And I'm going to start with something that um, he had ended with, is that it's worth the investment to talk to a lawyer when you first start your business. I know that sounds scary. Your small business, it's really expensive. How can I possibly do all these things? Because if you put the money in the upfront, even for a consultation, even doing this is very helpful because I'm just going to rattle off all the various things. Law permeates everything. <coughs> Businesses are creatures of law. Every aspect of it, and I'll go into that. Because how I make my money, there's this old commercial, you're all way too young for it, but it used to go like this. It was a Midas Muffler commercial. Midas Muffler commercial. And it said, you can pay me now or pay me a lot more later. <laughs> and that's really, really true when it comes to law. The litigation side, when you're already in a dispute, that he said too, that's where he really puts the time. It's all that, uh, the, the conflict, when, he, when, when there's already a problem with it. And... Um, that's where it's really expensive. That's really where lawyers uh, make the money. The court system is very inefficient. It's inefficient because you're protecting everybody's rights. So everybody gets the right to do all these kind of things and scream. And the more money people have, the more money they spend, and the more adversarial it is, the more just there's certain personalities and certain lawyers with certain personalities. It's just fight, 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 fight because it's it's money going up, and you got you got to deal with it once you're in litigation, as opposed to really using a, the trite term about being proactive. So first thing, it's actually good that we started with the uh, intellectual property, because that's like the core. Okay? I have this idea. I have this passion. I have this service that I want to provide, or this widget that I want to uh, provide, because it's really, really good. Okay, Now what do I do with it? So some of you do, may have your, um, your, your own businesses. Are you in some kind of business form? What kind of business form are you in? Anybody has businesses already? What do you have? The LLC. Maryland? Okay. What about you? LLC? Okay. So do you, do you understand why you would be, you know what an LLC is? A limited liability company? Okay. What are some other options? Corporation, you've heard of, heard of those? It can be partnerships. I'm going to say for purposes of this that the two um, main ones that people are talking about now that really are of any relevance are limited liability companies and, and corporations. Limited liability companies are relatively... Um, new in the world of law. It's about 30, 35 years old. Um, so let me tell you why. Well, you tell me. Why did you go into an LLC and not just practice it? What's your name? Uh, Jessica. Jessica. Why didn't you just do your firm or your, your businesses of uh, Jessica? Um, so the thing is, I'm a tech startup, and so I looked up online and was like, okay, I have two options. Top, two options, actually, a corporation or an LLC. So they said on this site that I just looked at, um, Corporations are normally for like larger entities, like they have it's like more form, um, only have like more resources to expend. And I was like, well, 
that's not really starting out. So LLCs, like you have, um, I believe, uh, a less of a chance to get sued. Okay. But, <laughs> uh, I'm going to back you up even before that. Okay. okay. Why not just practice as Jessica? Why do you have to be a limited liability company or a corporation or any other um, corporate entity, any kind of business entity? Why? Uh, just to get my name out there. Just okay. to say this is my company, my little space. Okay. That's the legal reason for it. <laughs> it's the most important legal reason there is. What do you think? Because uh, your assets are like tied to this, so if you get sued, uh, they can come after your house and all that. That's yeah. that's the key piece. Did you have another thing to say? Yes, yes. Same thing. Okay. There are two primary reasons why you put yourself into some kind of business entity and you do not practice business in your own name. Okay. One is the pure legal piece, which is liability protection, okay? As far as the law is concerned, your entity is completely separate from you. So if you have debts, if someone sues you, if someone trips and falls in your part or your, your, your employees go after you because you didn't pay them wages, whatever, okay, you are separate from the entity. If, if you have, in fact, complied with those requirements that you have to comply with in order to maintain that protection. I'll get that to a minute. The other reason that you, um, or that, you, that you have to deal with, it's another form of law, but really important in terms of what kind of entity you're in and what, what kind of entity you choose, is the tax ramifications because there's a variety of different ways that you are taxed depending on what entity you choose from. There's corporate, you hear about corporate taxation. And then, have you ever heard of an S Corp? Anybody ever heard of an S Corp? Yeah. Okay, an S Corp is not an entity. It's not an alternative to a corporation or a limited liability company. It's a tax designation. And when I was in law school, it doesn't really stand for this, but it, it helped me remember it. It is generally for small companies, and it's way too complex to get into. But it's a way that you can choose to be taxed partly on your corporate side for dividends and partly on, on your income, or a limited liability company in straight form, but you can, you can choose to be. Um, limited liability is like a partnership that your income is your entity. For purposes of tax, there is no difference between you and your company, but only for tax reasons, not the liability section. Okay, But as a limited liability company, you could choose to be um, taxed like an S-Corp, or you could even choose to be um, taxed as a regular corporation. And you're all looking at me like, oh my god, why would I want to do that? Why would it be more complicated? That's why you need to talk to a lawyer. Because it all depends what industry you're in, what your plans are, are you going to have employees, are you going to do multi-state, are you going to just practice in, in one area. From everything from what you do, to how you're going to do it, to how many owners you have, all I'll go into what kind of form of business you should be set up as and what kind of tax structure you should have. And those are that's just the beginning. So you had this great idea of your intellectual property and you saw everything that goes with protecting your intellectual property. By the way, do not do anything until you do not talk about to anybody about your intellectual property until you have a non-disclosure form. <laughs> that gets me to my next point. A contract is a business person's best friend. Okay. Contracts do mean something, and they are specifics. Again, that Midas muffler commercial thing that I gave you. You can continue to go ahead and download all those contracts that you're using off the internet. Please do. Please do. Because they're useless, and they usually cause litigation, <laughs> and that's how lawyers will continue to be in business. I'm only being slightly... Um, um, what do you mean? I get so many people who... I don't have enough money. So I'm just going to, well, they use all kinds of, um, let's put it this way. If you have, if you're not a single owner of your LLC or your corporation, you should have some kind of, if you're an LLC, you need an operating agreement with your other business owners, okay? Or you need a shareholder's agreement, okay? And it needs to be reviewed by a lawyer for all those other issues that I said about what kind of form you'll be in um, and what, how you're going to be taxed. How are you going to operate? Okay, who's responsible for what? Who are, is one person just a passive investor? And who is that investor? And how are you going to get that, uh, that money? Do you know them? Are they family? There's securities laws that federal and state 
Yes, even in tiny, tiny micro companies, federal securities, not an intimidating word, they, they, there's lots of exceptions, can help you figure that out. How are you going to get capitalized? But all these, your, your shareholders agreement or your operating agreement, really need to be in a plan of action for you and your, um, your co-owners. It's, it's an essential term, and you don't know how many people come to me in the litigation side because they're already in trouble when they're fighting with each other, um, and they don't have an agreement, or they download something off the internet, which has inconsistent provisions, has provisions that have no application whatsoever to it. I can't tell you the number of, I'll give you an example, I had a, um, a nurse um, who had started um, a medical practice. She actually found the doctors to come have a medical practice. She had been treated badly by the doctor she was working for. She's very good um, army nurse. She starts to own practice. So she's actually the founder of the medical practice. Then she goes to retire, and she finds out that her operating agreement has no provisions whatsoever for any kind of retirement, like for founder and what's, what it's going to be. The operating agreement, when I looked at it, I couldn't believe it. It was an operating agreement that you would provide to a real estate private investment equity you know, the people who buy a bunch of different properties and then have investors and that kind of thing, they're holding companies. It was an operating agreement that was suited, not even good for that, but that's, that's what it was. It was, an, it was a private equity real estate investment type structure um, for this medical practice. Well, you can imagine, it was absolutely useless and did nothing to her. Now, I was able to re have her, the doctors that were, um, she needed to come to agreement because I put them between the two each other. We had a... Um, Kind of a mediation type thing, and I said, "Look, I said, you, you're going to want to do this. Yes, it's not in here, but you really want to you want to treat her well, because one of you is going to retire next, and you're not going to have any retirement either." And they look at each other and, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so I was able to repair that, but that's rare, and you know, usually there's it's not as not as well as that can go, but. But those are just everything that goes into a um, in those agreements. Again, way too much. I mean, I could spend forever just talking about. But you need to have those kind of agreements. Um, you need an agreement for pretty much everything you do, whether your your employees are at will. Let's go into employment law. That's my primary area of practice. I'm a small business lawyer, and I say that employment law is actually a um, a sub part of business law. If you're going to have employees at all, even especially in Montgomery County, where the laws apply to even the smallest of, of employers. But you think, again, all the taxes that go into it. You know that employers have to pay a portion of the, the Social Security tax for all the employees. You've got unemployment. You've got workers' comp. Those are all requirements that you have to do. Are they, are they employees or are they contractors? Everybody wants to just hire contractors because they can't afford the employees. It's not a decision. It's not a choice. It's law that determines all that. Play them overtime. What is overtime? Well, I'll just pay them a salary. I don't need to pay them overtime. That, that's not it either. <laughs> it's duty-based. Most employees are, are in fact, um, non-exempt, and you do have to pay all those things. And that's just, oh, then you hear about the discrimination laws, and there, you know, there's the, there's, Rockville has its own laws. Montgomery County has its own laws. States has its own laws. The federal um, uh, laws are out there. What, where they are, where the agencies to, to do, um, there's, of just a myriad of um, rules, just basic knowledge that you have to have um, to run. Not that you need to know those laws, but you need to know that they're out there. And that's why I keep saying, going back to, yes, you should have an attorney. That's that's why we're out here. Perhaps it, owning a business and running a business is not easy. It's very rewarding, but it's not easy. If it was, everybody would do it. And we wouldn't have all these lawyers out here <laughs> business lawyers, I meaning there's a reason why they're out there, or MBAs or law degrees or all, any of those those things. Um, and that's what, even as a small business, and I'll tell you right now, with technology, it's become a lot easier for small businesses. I always swore, I jumped up and down, I swore, I, my poor husband, I'll never go on my own. I will never, ever, ever, I can't handle administrative stuff, I don't want to do all that kind of stuff. It's just, I'm a lawyer's lawyer, I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with employees and all that kind of stuff, employment lawyer. Um, with technology, because there is so much um, tech that you can get on there, all the codes, all the um, research, a lot of, and there's nothing, I say don't download your contracts, there's nothing wrong with getting a baseline, looking at it, and then having me work, you know, from there, or help, help I can help you explain what that is, but I basically serve now um, as 
as companies have gotten smaller because employees are so expensive, everybody's doing their core, their core service or their core widget, and they're outsourcing HR, they're outsourcing legal, they're outsourcing marketing. So I've become um, a general counsel to small businesses. Like, call me when you need me, or as we're as I tell you when you're going to need me, and that and that we work as a partnership. I know where you are in your phases of your business, and can and can help you grow and avoid problems. That's really what a lawyer's job is: is to avoid problems. Um, you need a lawyer, and you need an account. That's you don't want to mess around with either one of those. You got a question? Yes. Yeah, so I told you I'd talk forever. <laughs> so my friend and I are running a marketing agency, and it's specifically for small businesses. Uh -huh. In terms of marketing agency, like uh, we have like a contract per project, and usually those are not those are it's like less than five grand per project, right? Okay. Um, and like in those cases, and if I need help with contract from a lawyer, uh, is it do you guys take based on percentage, or are there like still fixed costs where it might really hurt the company? Okay, he's, 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 the gentleman said that it's investment. And I'll tell you, especially for something like that, because you pay it up front. It's an hourly rate for that kind of thing, okay? But you're, you're small. And again, I've been practicing for 30 years. I really know what you need to have in there. I mean, it's, it's going to go pretty quickly. That's why it's hourly. And it's hourly the more experienced the lawyer is. Although I'm, I'm small and I have very low overhead. If I were still in the big national firms I was in in D.C., I'd be one of the $600 to $800 an hour lawyer. I'm not. I'm about $350. Very, um, it, it is it just it's it's much much lower, and again because of my own business model and keeping my overhead low. But specifically to that, and I tell clients this all the time: yes, you will pay me that amount, but then you can use that same contract. I create a template for you. If you, both of your gigs are the same general thing that you're doing for them, okay, and you it's generally in the five thousand dollar range, okay. There's not once I tell you. This is what you need. Here's why. Then you you you're a smart person. I've already told you what it is. Oh, okay. I'll make sure that any other contract that someone gives to you, you'll also be looking at those things. So every time we do a project, you're learning something. And if I'm doing my job right and I do it right, I work myself out of a job. Then you owe me referrals. See, but that, <laughs> but that truly, but that is how it works. You, you build your you build your base. You 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 build. About you become more efficient every single time that you do it, and that's how you grow. I mean, you don't have to mess around with all those. Oh, I didn't know I needed that provision because you don't know what you don't know, and you never need a contract until you need a contract. <laughs> and you know, the best contracts are those you never take out of the drawer. Or, you know, we don't put drawers anymore; we scan everything. So you never have to look at it again because it was done so well. You thought about it. You know it's in there, and both parties know it's in there. I'm sorry, someone had a hand up. So let's say I need a disclosure with a certain type of service that I provide my client. You mean a non-disclosure? A non-disclosure, yes. Okay. And Does everybody know what that is? So, you asked a question, I'll explain what it is. So I hire you to do it, and I pay you, but that's a form that I can use for all my clients that come for that specific service. Yeah, now, again. Is that what you were saying? Like, what so it's worth paying you Oh, paying you the money to have a correct form that, that, that nothing's going to happen to you, or 99%, right? Nothing's going to happen to you. So that's what you're saying, that we can always use that form for that specific service. Right? Yeah, yes. It was, again, law is definitely not black and white. There's very little right. black and white in law, okay? If you're doing the exact same thing, mm -hmm. okay, then you could use the exact same contract. Right. Okay. There there may be nuances like certain parts of it, okay, that you leave for the you know a, a, a work order so that you can modify the specifics of it. But you have the, the basic terms and conditions that you can always use. But then you have a, I'll structure the right kind of contract for you to use. But generally yes, the more you do it, the more you become comfortable with it. But don't get stuck on that. That's where I, I, I caution you about downloading things off the internet. There's plenty of non-disclosure forms out there. Just because it's a form doesn't mean it hits what you need. So you'll, yes, there are some that you, once you have it, you can use it. But always know that there, you may need to modify um, 
you may need to tweak it right. depending if I have on the to project. Tweak it, I would yes. Call you and that's then exactly. That that's how it works. Okay. Will this work, work. land right? Okay. Well, what are you doing this time? Well, now let's let's make this sure this in here. It's a different state this time, so you want to make sure that those you got the proper you know governing law pr mm -hmm. provisions in there for, for that kind of thing. Um, someone else had a question. Oh, non-disclosure. Let me tell you what non-disclosure is. So we were talking about like your intellectual property. So sometimes you have this great idea, okay, but in order to go forward. You really need somebody to make an investment in you, um, or even if it's your your college roommate or, or something. Like, let's go into business together, you know. So you don't want to tell somebody about your idea, okay, and then have them run off with it, okay. So a non-disclosure agreement is basically an agreement that says, "Hey, we're going to go into inter negotiations, okay. We're going to talk about this, and I'm going to for purposes of these negotiations, I'm going to disclose stuff to you." But everything I disclosed to you is solely for this purpose and can only be used by you if, in fact, we end up having a real tight agreement and we decide to go forward uh, in it. But the, you cannot use what I'm about to, what I'm about to tell you. It very, very um, important because you could lose you can lose everything if they're going out there. Um, and, again, depending on what, you know, the value of what your idea is or, you know, the cost of it or what you're going forward, that can be very, very very so you important. You use that same document with your uh, an employee. If I hire someone, they see I'm training them what I do. I will have to have them sign that to make sure that they don't go off and do. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, that's a big, big part of it. confidentiality agreements, um, straight trade restrictions. Those are all those. You can't just tell somebody you can't go work for a competitor of mine. Right. Oh, absolutely. Do a lot of those. That's a contract is your best friend. Because if you don't have a contract, they can do. They can. They can't use your proprietary information. There's that, but they can go compete in, unless you have a contract. And those contracts are very, very, very difficult to enforce because our our commerce is everybody should be able to use their education, skills, and experience and get the best job that they can. So they have to be balanced to protect a legitimate business purpose and not just handcuffing them because you don't want to have competition. So those are very, very important and. Um, those are not something you want to download off the internet. I actually use that, that example on my website. So uh, for like NDAs, what are the consequences to break an NDA? So, so like a flat fee or is it if they end up like going and doing their own business, you can get like a percentage of what they made? Yeah, that's a couple different things. I usually build it a, a minimum liquidation, liquidated provision in there, so that you immediate what it is. Sometimes it's hard to prove your damages if you've never actually done it. You have nothing. You it's speculative. So you go to court. Great, you got good. You got a judgment. You're, he's liable. He he did this, but you can't prove your damages. Okay. So then those are all kinds of things that thirty years of experience. And I also not only am a business lawyer, I am a business litigator. I started out in the litigation. So my contracts know all the holes that people get in trouble with that cause them to go to litigation. So I, I like to think that's why um, I'm, I'm tighter on my contracts. So, But those are all the reasons why you don't want to try to guess what you need to have in this form contract that you've downloaded off the internet. You need to talk to somebody. Here's, here's what my concerns are. Here's what it is. What do I need to do, given this set of facts, what do I need to do to protect myself? And just because you have a contract doesn't mean someone isn't going to do it, but you've got a lot more protection. And you can even more important than the money damages is kind of what he was also talking about, the injunction. An injunction, an extraordinary relief where you go into court and go, I don't have time for a trial, I don't have time for discovery, and that kind of thing. I need help right now. You need to stop him. Okay, the bulldozer is about to run down the historic building. Okay, you, there's no bringing it back. Okay, you've got to stop this person from um, taking my ideas because I'm going to be irreparably harmed. Boy, I'm really getting into all kinds of different things. See, I'd love to talk about this kind of stuff. So. But this is what, these kind of questions are what's really good to, to understand that the, the scope of law permeates everything that you're doing. We didn't even touch on it. She's going to tell me to shut up now. I'm not. I actually asked our student leads to make sure we had one more opportunity for a student to ask a question. Okay. Just for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what about uh, ownership of the company, like dividing? Contracts, like what? When would you? I mean, I assume you want to think about that early on before you, you know, start working on something. And also, how do you approach that? Absolutely, it, you should actually have that done before you 
go follow your articles of organization, become an LLC, or become a corporation. That's why we're saying your shareholders agreement or your or, or your operating agreement. An operating agreement is the term for limited liability and shareholders agreement is the term for a shareholder and for corporation. Um, yes, those are absolutely key. Everything from who's doing what, are they just passive, are you going to have um, responsibilities? Are you going to be employees separate from the corporation? Are you going to be an S corp? So that how you're going to be taxed? What happens if one of you becomes disabled? Just where did the stocks go? How can you um, buy sell agreements and corporate in there? Help you with the whole anything that can happen. That's what we're trained to do to help you walk through. What do you want to do about this? What do you want to do about this? And I put bad boy provisions and it could be bad girl provisions in there too. But a lot of these things that you see the same boilerplate provisions as a litigator, I know that the biggest problem is when there's a, when I've had, I can't tell you how many times I've had cases where one of the owners is stealing from the other one. Um, and it, it happens. And trying to get their stock back and keep your running back. So I put, I put bad boy provisions in there. If you've done any any of these things, I get your stock back. Hands down. You, know, you don't have the court divide them or anything else. But you run the company down. So all kinds of different provisions. Yes. Absolutely up front. And again, if you do it up front, then you probably won't need it down the line because both of you, or three, five of you, whatever, how many owners there are, have gone through all these issues. You've talked them through. There's no, well, that's not what I meant by that. Well, that's what I meant by that. You said this. No, I didn't. That's, that was a negotiation. No, we said, it's what's in those four corners. And if it's not there, then it's up, up for whatever. <laughs> all right. Well, can we give her another round of applause? <laughs> So I have some gifts for you. I didn't bring enough. A oh, well, I can give you that too. This is far more fun. Now that I'm into marketing, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So anybody who asks me questions, okay. So you can you can stress out, or you can you can squeeze the stress ball. There you go. You can have that one. Whoever went down on the floor. There you go. You'll be back there. <laughs> Good thing I'm not a baseball player. Her website as well, so you can go on her website, you can go into her ebook and contact her. Yeah. I'll roll it, how's that? And we also go. want her to give Carrie Parker I can't even roll gift. it straight. There's some more. We got you Thank you. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause again. <laughs> Anybody else want to stress ball? <laughs> I'm so okay. sorry I didn't get a chance to say hi at the beginning. Um, again, I'm Sydney. I just wanted to address a couple of things that we had talked about when we first got the chance to meet everybody. Thank one of your biggest concerns was whether or not you should be sharing your ideas. Um, and I just want sh I, I hope this was very helpful for you. This is the first time that we've done a legal workshop. Was it helpful? Yes. 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 Awesome. Of course you're going to say that. I'm still here. Should we do this again? Amazing. And before <laughs> everyone leaves, I just wanted to make sure if we all signed in. Yeah. Oh, Does anyone have the sign-in sheet? No? Okay. okay. One last thing before we go. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages asking, what do we do if we change the name of our business? That's completely okay. You know, we're still running through the ideas and whatnot. Just email us, okay? We'll make sure we, we make the change on our end. Yeah, guys, also, this was our third workshop. Three out of six. We're going to have a marketing workshop next week. So we're really getting into the business end of the process. And sooner or later, you guys are going to be on the stage um, pitching it in front of mock judges. So really, you guys should be having your um, ideas materializing by now. Um, I don't mean that in a way that you guys should have something to hold, but definitely have a strong foundation of what you're going to share and uh, using this as a step-by-step -step to, um, you know, really bring everything together. If okay. in the morning. Sorry, I forgot to share. I just want to let you know all Raptor Tank participants, I teach a business law course here, which Ms. Parker has generously agreed to come to, which will be a longer session, one-hour session on employment law. And so you're welcome to join us. It'll be on October 29th in Humanities, this building 133 from 9.30 to 10.45. That's only for Raptor Tank contestants, so please don't invite your friends. Don't flood the classroom. And Hannah belongs in that class, as does Sydney, so you can join them and see some familiar faces. We did talk about having a really solid idea. If you feel like you're falling behind or you have other questions, do not hesitate to talk to us. It's what we're here for, okay? okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, also, are you guys all in the group meet? I know I, I know we're in the third week, but if you guys are not in the group meet yet, you guys are like, you know, come on, get on that. So um, I know some of you guys are. Good for you. And uh, please, if you guys have any questions, talk to us. We want please. to help. Okay? Yeah, I don't get enough messages these days. I'm a little lonely. So please message me on group. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Wait, and before you leave, do you think you can sign it? Such a good job. Oh my god. Great. And I know it's hard. It's such a short time. No, no, no. It's a lot. It's a lot. Make sure you sign it because if you don't sign it, then they got it. Yeah. Have you signed it? Yeah.